Hey everyone, my name is Dennis and today we're going to be uh, doing a little video to discuss um, diagnosing a CV axle issue. Uh, in this case, uh, it's not just a click when you accelerate, but it's a repeated click um, when you turn. So we'll go for a little drive here and we'll talk about a few different ways to diagnose and maybe unveil a few mysteries uh, with a few things you've seen on the internet. So let's go for a quick drive. Safety first, right? All right, here we go. Turn right. That's pretty obvious. Just gonna pull a little UE on the road here. Make sure we're safe. This joint's really bad. Uh, it started with basically a clicking. But the way you can tell it's a joint is by the repeated clicking. Not a single click when you accelerate or decelerate, but a repeated clicking when you um, turn. Let's try this again. This time, uh, I'm gonna just accelerate and I'm gonna put the car into neutral, okay, which it is right now, and listen what happens. Okay, so very little noise there. Um, because in this case, neither of the axles was being driven. And clearly, this CV joint is very loud. Also notice in reverse, it's not so bad. Um, doesn't seem to matter whether I turn right or left, but normally, if you're turning left, the right side tire is driven. Why is it driven? Because it's on the outside and it's actually going farther. Um, here, I'll just pull over for a sec. If I'm turning um, right, then the left side tire is on the outside it's spinning faster and because of the design of the open differential that's the one that's spinning faster um, uh, so that's the one that's being driven and that's why uh, when you're turning right generally if you're hearing noise on the left that means it's the left side uh, cv joint and if you're turning left and you're hearing the noise on the right or sorry if you're turning left and you're hearing noise generally it'll be on that right side tire why because it's going farther and because it's going farther it's the one that's actually being driven again due to the nature of the open differential so that's a little drive test and we can put it up on the hoist uh, it's a little hard obviously you can't really hear which side it's coming from but when we put it up on the hoist um, we can actually run the car and uh, do a more definitive test so let's try that next all right well we're here in the car the vehicle's up on the hoist. Uh, let's fire it up and uh, do a quick test. Um, again, I've got, got the wheels just off the ground. If you were doing this, uh, again, with a front-wheel drive or a rear-wheel drive, of course, if it was a rear-wheel drive, you wouldn't be worrying about a CV joint, uh, generally wearing out because they last a lot longer. But in this case, I've got the car on the hoist. And uh, what I have to do uh, before I run this test is just go into settings on the car and turn off uh the uh, stability uh control which is going to be the edc setting we're just going to turn this off so it's like the traction control um on the leaf it's called bdc and i turn that off why because um when i put it into drive uh the basically i wouldn't be able to accelerate uh the front tires will just sit there and spin really slow i turn the bdc off i can speed up a little bit uh for the purposes of the test so we have a camera down below, and all we're going to do is just uh, gently take our foot off, and you'll see the tires will start spinning up. We're not going to go too fast because there's no need to go crazy here. and let's put it in and turn it off. If I was doing this test in my shop uh, on jack stands, obviously it'd be pretty important to uh, make sure the rear tires are blocked. There's no chance the vehicle can accelerate. 
And obviously, if it's four-wheel drive, uh, you have to have it up. All four wheels have to be on the ground. Why? Because um, if you raise up the front, it'll drive right off the ramps and hurt somebody. So there you go. Quick bench test, or, or we'll call it a waist test. Um, and if you took this to a barrage, there's a good possibility they'll take it. For, they would take it for a drive and do exactly this test, or test like it to, to uh, just narrow things down. Um, a wheel bearing, by the way, would generally be making noise all the time. It makes kind of a roaring noise. Uh, a few people have quoted uh, the axle, uh, sorry, the strut bearing as potentially causing noise. Well, the strut bearing will make noise while you're turning the wheel only. So in this test, if you did it, you would hear screeching and squealing or groaning coming from those. Uh, when a CV joint is failed, you'll hear it when the car is moving only. And uh, in this case, it's pretty obvious with all the popping and the vibration that we need to deal with that. So let's go take it out of the car and do a post-mortem. All right, we've now had an opportunity to take this CV joint apart and uh, I've got a pretty good idea why it failed. It wasn't broken like I was thinking. It's actually uh, something a little um, more subtle. So here is the uh, offending joint and you'll notice there's a fair bit of corrosion. Um, I don't believe in the factory there's a whole lot of paint going on here and you can see the uh, clip. There used to be a, a boot just like this one right here and this is the joint essentially taken apart. This cage would normally go in here and this piece is in there and then you've got your balls that are sitting in these races. Now if you look at these parts okay. you'll notice they all look um, a, there's some obvious wear ridges. Uh, you can actually see where it's worn in, uh, probably why it was making so much noise. And if we look at this cage, you can see corrosion. Um, and indeed, if you look inside here, um, inside the, the joint housing, um, you can see obvious wear ridges and again, signs of corrosion. And then the other kind of towel is that these are the, these are supposed to be shiny. They should look like, you know, stainless steel polished spheres. They are not, they are pitted and rusted. Um, so what happened to this joint um, was pretty much a result of some corrosion and you know, probably a 50 cent clip. And what happened is this boot, unlike this one, which is solid here, I can't slide it back and forth. The joint is designed to slide back and forth and this, uh, the inside part of the tripod joint is just fine. This boot's fine. This boot was not ripped. It was just uh, loose. And what happened, probably a little bit of corrosion got under and perhaps the factory didn't tighten this clip. There's a crimp joint here quite enough. So you could basically kind of move this joint back and forth. And the end result is there was, I don't know, maybe a cup of water, half a cup of water inside this joint. Now we have winters with salt here. So invariably um, the salt, some grit got in there and that was the end of this joint. So unfortunately, kind of an expensive repair because you can't just go buy another um, CV joint and rebuild it. You actually... Uh, on the 2018 LEAF, you've got to buy a whole new axle. Um, and again, I would strongly recommend that you buy a new axle if you have to do this kind of work. Um, I ended up rebuilding the left side just uh, because again, it had the same issue with the loose boot. Um, so if you have a later model LEAF, it's probably a good idea during service just to make to grab this outboard boot and make sure that it doesn't slide back and forth under the clamp. Um, in any case, that's our post-mortem. And uh, so we've successfully diagnosed, replaced Got an alignment done, the car is quiet as a mouse. If you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you would uh, like and subscribe. Uh, it would certainly help as we uh, work to build uh, more content for this channel. Hope you found this useful.